Hey everyone, Justin here from SF Garnish Music Production. We're going to be joined by Gary Oakland, who you're listening to right now on his Spotify playlist. This is All Will Ever Need by Gary Oakland. And uh, this is a special day because we're going to be talking about music marketing. We're often talking about um, a lot of different things, but most of all, music in general. We have music production, audio classes, mixing and mastering, sound design, digital audio workstations. And today we're talking about music marketing because it's the juice that keeps us going it's the things that keep the world turning around. As much amazing music as you can create out there, you need to create the marketing platforms, the website. And today we'll be taking a deeper look, not only into Gary's tactics, but also um, his way of putting out his vibe. So, hey Gary, how you doing, man? What's up guys? Uh... Yeah, thanks for having me. Excited to. The music's a little hot. Uh, I'll turn that down a little bit. Cool. Yeah, so um, this is going live out to our social media. Please like and subscribe. Um, if you guys want to join our our attendees on our live stream or our um, what's it called webinar, free. There's a little link, so just click below, and we're gonna look at. Some of Gary's stuff here. All you guys that have started out early, we're just gonna go through a few things. We got his new label that he just started called Sunset Drip. It's sunsetdrip.com. You can see his homepage, his new releases. Let's check this out together here as we wait for some attendees and for, you, for all you guys to join us. Artist list. And we got curated playlists going on. Good. Nice. And we'll be talking more in depth on the tactics of what Gary Oakland is doing here with his label. So we're listening to Gary Oakland right now. This is all we'll ever need. And I hope that all we ever need is Gary's wisdom here in music marketing because it's super helpful at times. Um, so Gary Oakland, your, your, your uh, real name, do you use that at all? Are we going to use your name or stage name? Do you go by both or? Uh, yeah, Gary, Gary's the stage name and just like to keep it simple and just go with that for everything. So yeah, I've been like most of the people that meet up and stuff like that, call me Gary um, for simplicity's sake. Uh, yeah, helpful that the meetup's in Oakland, so that nice. uh, gives me a little boost there. <laughs> Gary Oakland, awesome. Very cool. I was um, doing a lot of research on, uh, you know, what types of questions to ask you, and I, I really felt stumped because the music industry is ever-changing the marketing of music industry. And I, I just really think that um, I'm hoping that you can kind of hone in on on today's, like, what's working for you, um, what's been phased out, um, what's maybe on the up and up. So, um, yeah, stoked to put that out there. And um, I'm going to put a couple links out there for people as well. Um, just if you guys want to support Gary Oakland, go to this merch page right here. This is on the sunsetdrip.com slash merch. And I'm going to put it into our chat so that people can start checking out your links and anyone that is interested in our classes at SF Garnish and Soul Graffiti Studios, we do audio classes on all digital audio workstations. Um, Gary, you work with Logic, right? Yeah. Yeah. I use Logic. Awesome. So our most popular is Logic and Ableton. Um, but there's also Pro Tools and FL Studio that we also teach. And then from there, you can go to sound design, mixing and mastering, um, and then through our upper classes of advanced courses into our academy and our producer program. So this is our free little look at music marketing, which is actually an upcoming class with Gary Oakland. So if you're interested, check that out. And um, please check out Sunset Drip. This is my first time on his website right here. Super stoked to be 
um, just kind of seeing what's out there on his new label. How old is this label? Yes, yeah, so I started Sunset Drip probably a year, maybe 14 months ago. Um, it was definitely in quarantine. Um, and by started it, I mean, I guess I like built the website. Uh, and yeah, it's it, it started mainly as like, I didn't want to just make like a GaryOakland.com. Uh, I wanted to be a little broader than that. And at the time, uh, was making tracks with Lee Brave, who was my roommate and, you know, has uh, frequented the the meetups. Uh, so wanted something to like as an umbrella for, you know, any other artists that I work with as collabs. And uh, yeah, just kind of built out the website and started uh, kind of putting some feelers out there and have ended up working with some some really cool artists. Nice. Very cool. Um, yeah, so it is 6.02. We're going to be doing this out this power hour with you on music marketing. And I'm, I'm sure you have like a little bit of a plan yourself. Um, is there anywhere you want to start with sharing your screen here and just kind of getting into it? And I can kind of ask some questions as we go. Panelists can also, or sorry, attendees can also chime in where you can too. Yeah. Yeah. I can, uh, I can take over the share. Uh, one thing that I definitely wanted to like cover in this class uh, and in the the webinar here is just how to use some of like the native tools from some of the platforms like Spotify for artists, Apple music for artists. Um, so we can run through some of that uh, and just go over like some of the the numbers that I I've, I've gotten uh, kind of as a result of the the marketing that I've done. So um, yeah, happy to happy to share and kind of start there if that works. Yeah. And that'd be great if you could get a little overview of your career in music and kind of, kind of intro, you know, where you've been too. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Well, yeah, let's start. Um, let's start here then at my Spotify profile. So I'll, uh, I'll say I focus a lot more on Spotify than other platforms, other streaming platforms. I like am a Spotify user. So, uh, this will be like my home base. I also, I like keep an Instagram, uh, you know, account for, uh, the music stuff, but, uh, more than uh, Apple music, for instance, or, or like YouTube, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, so this is me, Gary Oakland. Um, I started playing music. I started playing clarinet when I was in uh, fifth grade. Um, did that for a while, did a little marching band in high school. It was super cool. Uh, and then 10th grade, I was like, wow, I don't want to march. Uh, I started teaching myself piano, started playing in jazz bands, played a lot of jazz piano through high school, through college uh, and jazz combos. And then moved to San Francisco after I, uh, I graduated college uh, and kind of was left with uh, with no one to play with again. Uh, had been playing, you know, with other people for my whole you know, career in music to that point. Did a lot of gigging with, with the bands and with, you know, a, a band of my own back home. Um, and was kind of left to, you know, work something out on my own. And at that time, I just played piano. So... Uh, taught myself how to use logic uh, started sampling a lot and just making beats and um, just putting a lot of time into it and just it became something that I really loved and continued to to go after so uh, at this point I have about uh, probably like three and a half million three and a half million total streams on Spotify um, like close to a million on Apple Music uh, here's some of the just like some of the stream counts on, on some of my top stuff. Um, and yeah, it's just been really fun. It's, it's not my full-time gig. Uh, so I, uh, my day job, I work at Pinterest, um, tech company in advertising sales. And, uh, I think, yeah, if you take the class or tune in, there's a, a lot of learnings to be had from just like kind of traditional sales role, uh, in that it's a lot of, you know, cold outreach to people, a lot of digging around and, and like really putting the hours in, putting like the grind in to, to see your results, um, without seeing results for a long time. Um, so that's been, I think really, really helpful. And it's been, uh, it's been less stressful for me to not, I'm not worried with, uh, you know, like making all of my, my money off of music. Um, and I can kind of just focus, focus on it, like for the love basically. Um, but yeah, so here's here's just like my uh, Spotify presence. Uh, I've got, I guess I have 51 songs released. Um, I <laughs> that's not including some tracks that I've released and and uh, kind of deleted, uh, especially like the early early ones that were pretty shitty. Uh, but here's you know um, 
the discography, um, a ton of tracks, um, a lot of, you know, uh, different collaborations with the artists, uh, and then some of the, uh, playlists that I've made, uh, as a, as part of Sunset Drip, uh, on, you know, different playlist pitching services, just to get, uh, some more exposure out there for the brand, for myself and for the label. And so those are, those are these here. Uh, and then, this uh discovered on we got my myself and lee brave um for my my top streaming track essentially got on this um editorial spotify playlist uh, about a year ago still on there somewhere um and it's resulted in uh, over five hundred thousand plays so so that's been really awesome too um and also was that through submit hub or something else that you were able to submit that or that is a great question. Let me share a different tab and we can go over my Spotify for artists. Um, okay. Can you guys see this now? We can. Okay, perfect. Um, so this is my Spotify artist page. Essentially, um, when you release music uh, and it's upcoming and so I'd always recommend releasing music, uh, or submitting it at least like a month in advance, uh, to your release date so that you can, um, submit it. Essentially Spotify has a native submissions tool that you can use, um, to pitch, uh, upcoming tracks to their editorial team. So I would always recommend doing this. Uh, this has been a huge part of my, um, my strategy overall. Uh, I've been doing singles for a long time as opposed to albums because, um, you can just keep getting a chance to resubmit on every single that you release, uh, with an album, you only get one, uh, once one track per album, uh, that you can release here, um, or that you can submit. And essentially that gets you onto like release radar for your followers, for example. Uh, and then, you know, the chance to, uh, get on some, some of those editorial playlists. So here's an overview. And again, I mostly focus on Spotify. We can do a little bit of Apple music as well. Um, and that's just kind of based on where, where I listen personally. Um, and here's like a breakdown of what, what playlists I'm on currently on Spotify. So this is in the last month. Um, there's a few different sections. So algorithmic playlists are stuff like, um, like artist radio, uh, daily mix, discover weekly. They're all kind of put together by, uh, by the machine, uh, on the back end of Spotify, uh, just based on like listening behavior, stuff like that. Um, so this is a really good chance to start building up your presence and getting, um, getting some ears. Essentially you can get on release radar super easily. Um, essentially all you have to do is submit and then all of your followers will, will get that on that release radar. It's a good place to start. And then you'll slowly kind of start making it on these other, um, algorithm playlists. Uh, looks like there's a couple more. Um, and then these are, uh, those Spotify editorial play. This is only, this is a small one, uh, with a, a collaboration that I did, but this is kind of that main one. Uh, again, these are pretty rare to get on. So pretty pleased about that and can give you a lot of, uh, of streams. And then here's where I've been really focusing in terms of the promotion is listener made Spotify playlists. Um, and same with Apple music as well. But, uh, for example, chill select is uh, chill select, excuse me, is an aggregator that I've been working with, um, that puts together, um, you know, different beat tapes, uh, with a bunch of different artists, uh, and gives good promotion. Uh, so I've, looks like I've got, you know, four tracks that I've worked with, uh, them on. Um, and, and this, this is a, like, this is a significant, significant amount of playlists. And uh, this is all the songs that I've, uh, you know, that are, that are showing up at this point, but it's, it begins to be a lot once you've done this, uh, for a while. And once you, you know, make a habit to submit every, uh, every release you have to like, you know, your whole network, essentially, um, you see there's about 2,400 total playlists. Um, and that's, uh, just in the last 28 days. Um, but that's a little bit of, uh, Spotify for artists. Um, and then in terms of Apple music, uh, this is what this looks like. Again, it's not, um, it's not, as much my main focus, one of my recent tracks did get a lot of uh, traction on Apple Music and essentially got on a, um, it's it's this one, uh, All We'll Ever Need. It got on a, essentially an Apple Music editorial playlist uh, and it's been doing some some pretty big numbers. So uh, it has, uh, yeah, I'm a little, 
less familiar uh, with this one, but essentially, where is just that? Um, uh -huh. Lifetime. This one got about, I think it just passed 400,000 Apple Music streams, um, mostly thanks to essentially that editorial playlist. Yeah, so 353K from uh, from this playlist and then, you know, from saves as a result of, of that playlist. Um, and, and the good news is Apple music pays about twice as much per stream as Spotify. Um, it just, uh, in terms of the like backend metrics there. And then, yeah, that's about all I was going to share, at least on the, on the front end again, here's my, um, my labels website, sunsetdrip.com. Please check it out. Um, and you know, feel free to use the the label, uh, essentially like the demo submission process. Um, if you want to send some stuff, it's, uh, you know, it's a pretty small label. It's based in the Bay area. Um, and you know, I'm just basically working with the network that I've made, uh, you know, in the area of, of great producers and artists. Um, so, you know, if you have something to submit, I'd love to hear it. Uh, here are some of the artists that, been, uh, you know, this is me obviously. Um, but you know, some of the other artists that, that are on the label right now, um, and then just some of the, the releases here. And then, uh, some of these are, are backdated, like my, my first album, like Sunset Drip didn't really, uh, exist, but I still, you know, own all the, the rights to that. So, uh, back at that. Um, but yeah, that's about all for kind of screen share stuff. If we want to go back to some questions or nice. anything like that. Yeah. So, um, you were just talking about both Spotify and Apple and a, and a couple playlists that you got on that really helped out with your career. Um, there's a couple different ways of, I guess, uh, submitting. And I'm just kind of curious which ones worked for you versus Apple music and versus Spotify. And is there a difference like, uh, sound plate versus submit hub? Yeah. Yeah. So those are two of like the main services that, that I've been using. Um, and we can kind of walk through those, I guess I can reshare, uh, and just kind of walk through those sites, but, um, so the first, and I would say the main, um, in terms of websites like this, essentially like submission websites, and I'm sure there's a bunch, um, but this is one that I've, you know, seen some, some decent success with. This is, uh, it's called submit hub. Essentially, um, you know, you, you upload your tracks, uh, you kind of tag them with different genres, um, and, um, and then you can, you know, kind of search for curators, uh, based on, oh, here we go. That's about a tip. Um, you know, based on their taste, based on their, their playlists that they're working with. Um, here's some of the, like, essentially the preview questions. So you can either get like, um, you know, feedback or a certain amount of, of listening time. You can, you know, let them monetize your tracks essentially if they make like a YouTube playlist, um, for the ad revenue. Uh, generally I do this because frankly, like I'm not going to get a ton of exposure. Uh, if I just, if I restrict my tracks too much, um, and you know, it's, it's a really small amount of ad revenue that, that they'd be dealing with anyway. So I'm not worried about that. And essentially here's what the, the list looks like. And I do, I get premium credits. Uh, otherwise you get like two free credits uh, a day to submit with. Um, what but does, essentially you can take a look at. What does premium what credits, uh, what, what does that mean? Premium credits. So for each, um, for each playlister that you want to submit to, for example, here, if you select it as a $1 sign, it means it's one credit. Um, credits like about a dollar. Um, and essentially, some if they're like bigger yeah so like these are two dollar signs based on like different amounts of reach or something like that um and so yeah it's about like a dollar per submission um just to to get in front of these uh curators but you can kind of take a look at their you know their history in terms of like what stuff they they approve um you can take a look at their playlists 
uh, that they have that they're kind of promoting and you can listen through. You can also see like the average number of listeners that uh, a submission will get if it's approved, uh, which I think is super. And I think that's like per month, um, but really handy to take a look at like, okay, like this has a decent amount of, um, you know, of range essentially uh, like some of these are, you know, pretty small, but it just depends. Uh, and then some of these are also like music blogs, um, you know, different stuff like that, different websites that are just kind of doing uh, music reviews. Um, but yeah, you can kind of take a look like this one. This guy's a, a three dollar sign, but it looks like you know the the number of listeners, especially like on this one, are pretty pretty big. Um, and so yeah, I'll probably submit to you know at least fifty to eighty of these um, on my on premieres that I I release. Um, and I think it's especially important, um, at least for for Spotify. Uh, and I'm pretty sure Apple music works the same way. Like the first two to three weeks after your release are, are super key for essentially placements, um, whether that be onto editorial stuff or onto things like discover weekly. Um, the algorithm is looking at, you know, save rates, uh, number of plays, numbers of, uh, of listeners. So the more that you can do and like that, those metrics over time. And so the more that you can do for like a big boost right at the start, uh, the more essentially impact that you can make uh, and hopefully get some long-term plays out of that by getting some of those bigger um, playlists, uh, like the, the editorial placements and stuff like that. Nice. So, so it's similar to like a Kickstarter where if like, if you get like a, you know, in the first week or two or a certain time period, $5,000 of it, that it kind of puts you as like, Hey, this is up and coming. And it, it kind of sends out to other possible views and donations or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And it's, um, yeah, it's just tracking like, and that's why it's important to, you know, to reach out, to have a good presence on, um, you know, on your social media, but having just real people, like real fans that you, you've built, like your friends essentially, and people that you've connected with that are actually mm -hmm. listening and, you know, saving your tracks and, um, and, and pe people that will actually, you know, when you, when you say you release something like, we'll actually take a listen and, and, and support you. So, um, Nice. Yeah, it's just important to try to make a big uh, organic and essentially promoted push, uh, but especially like the first two to three weeks after a release. Nice. So you were, um, so kind of timeline wise, you were talking about the artist, the Spotify artist back page and submitting that when, with a, a, a month in advance, right? And going kind of a release radar. Is that what that is? Kind of getting on the release yeah. radar. And then the submit hub is actually p after the release, you're saying? That's correct. Yeah. So submit hub is, um, you have to link to, uh, basically a live track. Um, and you can do some advanced stuff, but I haven't found too much success with that. It's essentially like if you wanted to get, um, you know, a, a music blog to write up, uh, something about your upcoming, you know, album, uh, and then release it in conjunction. But, uh, I think, where I've seen success on Submit Hub is, you know, getting in touch with actual playlisters that have active playlists and and just getting those listens and and trying to make that kind of uh, you know impact. Um, but that is a good segue into so when I say you know upload your tracks uh, to Spotify, um, I there's a there's a variety of different essentially sites that you can use for this as well. Uh, but I use DistroKid and essentially this is my my distributor. So um, I guess it depends on, you know, the scope of this, but for instance, anybody can release a track on SoundCloud. You just upload it to SoundCloud, right? But you can't just upload a track to Spotify. You have to go through a distribution service. Uh, again, there's a bunch, uh, CD baby is another one. Um, but they'll, they'll take your tracks and essentially like distribute that to all of the, I don't know if you can see these icons very well, but you know, basically any streaming, um, service, uh, they'll kind of just handle it. Uh, DistroKid is, uh, is nice. It's pretty cheap. Um, and I've had, you know, pretty good support from them overall. Uh, but yeah, like there's, there's a lot of different competing services for this. Uh, but essentially you would go through, um, you upload, you know, this is an upcoming track actually that, that we're releasing uh, congruency on the label. Um, it's, you know, we uploaded it, uh, end of June, it's releasing on July 30th. Um, it'll take two to five days, I would say for DistroKid to, um, process it. 
then it'll send it to stores and then you can see it essentially on your um your upcoming tracks section here and this is where you would submit i don't have any it's just congruency on that track um but that is really important to do in, uh, in advance because you need to submit to those editorial playlists at least two weeks before your release date or it's not considered um and that's essentially like the biggest opportunity that you have as an artist to get in front of a ton of people um and that's why you see a lot of smaller artists just release a ton of singles because every single that you release you can submit it again and try to make a splash and try to get on these big playlists and that's where you you know see these lasting stream counts um and you know build your fan base from there nice yeah so this uh timeline it seems kind of crucial to you know learn the timeline of where and, and how your distribution which you're you're going through distro kit here um have you used any other ones cd baby or other distribution or is that the one that's kind of been your main go-to yeah distro kit has been my my main thing um since a uh, long long ago these are the, the very first things that i released there was a again one that i removed from stores it was my very first album that was I think it's still on, on sound, uh, cloud maybe. Um, but yeah, I've had them for this is probably three years worth of, of releases. Um, and yeah, yeah. Pretty straightforward. Uh, they do, sometimes it takes a bit to get, um, like a support ticket going if you do have an issue. Uh, but once they, once they get that, they're, they're usually pretty good about sending those, those updates or whatever. Um, uh, and yeah, generally, pretty cheap compared to a lot of services that you could use. Um, and yeah, just like, yeah, straightforward. The, the, the interface is nice. Um, and yeah, it's just allows you to, to get your stuff into stores and then, and then it's up to you. Uh, and then, you know, you go to, uh, you know, you go th through these submission services. Then once you release, you know, you go through, um, submit hub, Soundplate is the same thing um, where, you know, you take your already released track uh, and, you know, submit it to different curators, uh, you know, depending on the genre. Um, but yeah. Very cool. Yeah. So um, great. I'm going to go ahead and make sure that we get back into this mode here. So awesome. So uh, we are going live also um, to our different social media. So please go there and like and subscribe. Um, and what we're trying to do here is really kind of distill, um, you know, there's so many people that have music out there, but really it's like, can, can there be listeners? And, and what kind of work can we do? So we're not just the rat in the uh, little, what's it called? The cycling around in circles, but not going anywhere. Um, so really hoping, Gary, that you that you can kind of shed some light, and, and you have actually, and just in regard to the timeline, um, specifically choosing a distribution, you, you were saying DistroKid is yours, you've been consistent with it. Um, mm -hmm. I've been reading a lot about how, you know, consistently staying on specific social media and building certain things up is really key. And it sounds like you were saying Spotify has, has been your kind of bread and butter of like, that's your direction. And... Um, is, is submit hub your, your main, um, submission hub or are there other ones that we use? Yeah, there's, there's other, um, I would say submit hub in terms of like the different platforms that exist is, is the main one for me. I've used some of the different like playlist pitching services. Um, like, and there's a ton of them, you know, Omari, uh, song rocket is a new one that I've been testing out. Like, any number of services if you look up like spotify playlist pitching or something um will you know take your money and submit uh to, to curators uh i think that's you get mixed results um but you do have to you know test some and i think some work better for for certain genres um another thing that i have done a lot essentially is within spotify you you can just take a look through some user uh, generated playlists and try to find, uh, you know, in the place description, if there's a, a submission email or like a website or something like that. Um, and that just takes a lot of digging, but I've found uh, a lot of, you know, pretty successful playlists that way, just digging through, um, 
Spotify playlists uh, and and trying to find you know whoever's um, curating those uh, and getting in touch with them just kind of organically. Nice, nice. So really, kind of uh, knowing who you're submitting to is pretty important. It sounds like and and what the playlist is about. If if they'll like your style of music, um, so you're spending your money wisely. That's great. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And and then at this point, I've had. Um, you know, built up essentially like an email list, uh, keeping track of some of those playlisters outside of these different submission services. Um, and just like essentially emailing, uh, a big group of them with every release, uh, depending on, you know, the genre, but, uh, just to get in touch and, um, see if you can get on their, uh, on their radar. Nice. So this is kind of outside of the submit hub is like, once you know, you have this kind of relationship, they kind of know who Gary Oakland is, you're grabbing their email and emailing out like separately through your own mailer like hey i have a new release just fyi maybe you can put me on your next uh playlist or right is that, is that what you're saying that's exactly right yeah yeah nice. and uh and just you know keeping a keep I have like an excel sheet essentially with a bunch of different curators uh you know like what genre and you know what links to the playlist um just to you know to kind of be able to keep track of that and, and get a hold of them qu- like efficiently with new releases um and then i do i i did find my let me see i found my little deck that i put together on the essentially um what i was talking about with spotify playlist prospecting and i can share that okay can you see the this we can do a little bigger uh this is old uh excuse my my commentary on the left but essentially um this is an example of a you know a track that you would dig or or a a playlist that you dig around and find essentially uh you know this one would be for instrumental rap beats essentially um but they have their you know freestylebeats.org um and so go to there there's probably you know, a submission gate where you have to follow their, you know, artist or whatever, or their track, um, in order to submit yours, which is pretty, uh, that's the way sound plate works as well. Um, so just kind of do that, get your, uh, get your song to them and, uh, expect om- basically no one to reply. That's, that's a good like mindset going into this is like, the most likely outcome is they don't reply to you, but you never know. And if you do like a hundred of these, uh, then, you know, probably like 15 people will add you and you can get in touch with, um, you know, maybe five of them and, and create a, you know, relationship where you can just keep sending them tracks. And, um, and that, that really adds up in the long term. Um, and so this, this page essentially, if you go to this is a this is a like a classic you know submissions type of playlist uh it's got like twenty nine thousand followers that's good you don't know how active those followers are but like that's still pretty decent um you can sort it by uh like date added uh and you know i don't know when when this was but uh I found the last person added to this playlist probably via their submission link right and then I took a look at his artist profile. Uh, I don't know who this guy is, but this is just kind of my example. And what you can do for each artist um, is look at their discovered on and see all the playlists that they've kind of gotten traction with. And often if they're on one of these, they're going to have more playlists that they've come up on like this other, this all things rap um, playlist. And here's another email um, to submit to and you know another set of artists to go like pro- like dig through and see if you can find more playlists. And so you kind of get down this rabbit hole of like um, these different kind of promotional um, curated playlists. But it's if you can put in the work essentially, and and you know, like I said, if you do a hundred, you can expect at least some to to hit you back. If you do like ten, even like and give up, then I don't think anyone will will you know, nothing will come of that. But if you keep, keep submitting and keep digging around and make a, you know, make a, just like a, 
a goal to submit to X number of playlists per day. And, and like I was saying, especially at the start of um, your, your release cycle, you know, in the first couple weeks, it's uh, it can really make a good impact. Um, and then again, you can hopefully build up this network where you, you add to that, you add to that email list um, and you have more for the next release and just keep going and going. Nice. Awesome. So um, you said again, Soundplate, is that what it's called? Yeah, Soundplate uh, was the other submission uh, website. Okay. And and what's the price? Because you were saying like a dollar per submission roughly for SubmitHub. Right. Yeah. So once in uh, again, you get like, I think you get two free ones per day and then it's like a dollar per submission. Soundplate is free, but the way it works is you have to, like you're required to um, follow the playlist that you're submitting to and probably follow like the artist that, um, that made the playlist. Uh, and that is why if you do have some, you know, like I have, I don't even know, 500 playlists or something on Spotify just for my own personal use. Um, but if you are a playlister like that and you have um, decent playlists, you can get good traction as an artist by putting your playlist on Soundplate. And then you get essentially like these these up and coming artists, they're following you to submit. And then, you know, you can kind of build your network that way as well. Nice. Yeah. So it's actually so there's kind two of... sides of that. Yeah, so it's organically kind of building up just from people following back and forth, essentially, mm-hmm. from the sound play. Yeah. That's cool. So it's uh, that's cool. I suppose Submit Hub has two free credits per day, so you can kind of time it out and kind of capitalize on that if you're consistently on there every day. And right. Yeah. yeah. Do, you, do you utilize that yourself? Um, at this point, uh, in my scenario, I w- yeah, I would definitely recommend that, like, and that makes it easy, right? And Soundplate essentially times you out after you submit to like 10 in a row or something, and then you have to come back in a few hours. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you can make like a habit of whatever your latest track is that you released, taking your two free credits and submitting to somebody on Submit Hub, submitting to, you know, the eight or whatever that you can on Soundplate at a time, that takes you five minutes. You do that every day. Um, and slowly you can continue to build the just the traction that you make instead of releasing a track and then nobody listens to it essentially. Um, and I see that so often where it's like, yeah, yeah, I've got stuff on sound, but, uh, you know, um, on Spotify, uh, like you can here, check it out. And it's like, Oh, I have, you know, 19 monthly listeners or something. Cause I released it, but then I didn't do any follow up in terms of the, the promotion. Nice. Yeah. The follow up sounds, sounds pretty key. So we're, we're kind of looking at like a, a two month timeline, like pre-release and then post-release um is yeah. there anything else kind of in in that timeline you can think of uh the other stuff that i do i mean obviously let everybody know about it that asks you know at this point like my friends will ask me like what's new with with music so i'll try to tell everybody to you know whatever my next one is right um i also have uh my instagram which i can pull up and this is i would say my main social media um i over like, you know, for example, Twitter or Facebook or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and this, I have, you know, the, the Gary Oakland Insta and I have, um, the, the sunset trip, uh, Instagram account as well. But this is where I'll just essentially like make announcements for, for new tracks that have, that have come out, um, you know, try to do some organic promotion with, with my followers, which is not like a ton, but you know, if you can get, organically you know 50 to 100 people uh at least knowledgeable that you just had a release uh and get people listening to that that really helps in terms of um especially that initial push uh to try to signal to spotify that this is a good track you know people are interacting with this track uh and you should put it on like these other types of playlists um so i've got yeah 100 posts damn um and i've had it for a while but again it's like a lot of um I don't like milestones, like a thousand or, you know, a lot of releases, um, in terms of like promotional content for like the Gary Oakland brand, I was, I went through a phase where I was making some TikTok videos. Um, they did. Okay. It wasn't, it wasn't, it was fun to do them, but, um, and then, you know, just a lot of different content. Oh, here's another good content piece. Um, uh, I did some, some white claw tasting, uh, reviews, uh, just stuff like this. Um, 
and then here's you know keep going back this is like the the very start of my merch page which was before sunset trip even existed you know here's i just passed ten thousand listeners for the first time five thousand um and you know it, it starts really small uh but if you oh yeah here's like my first thousand streams um but then just kind of keeping people alerted i don't i like i don't use social media very much so i don't want to be like spamming people uh but it's a good way to just get the people that care about like a lot of my family and friends are are following me and um just want to be alerted that i have new stuff because i wouldn't want to just like text everybody every time um that i have a new release uh though that's a good strategy you should definitely you know for the people that that you want listening um texting and emailing people yeah any way you can but you don't you can't like burn out your fans you know you gotta you, you got to play a balance where you want to, you want to alert people, but you don't want to like annoy them. Um, and, but yeah, it's really important. Like you can't, but the, the thing that you really don't want to do is release a track and then nobody hears about it. And then like, you didn't get to share it with people, which is obviously your goal by releasing it. Um, and you know, you don't get all of the added value that you could have, um, had you kind of landed one of these big playlist spots. Uh, so yeah, just nice. a lot of different, I think a lot of different branches, um, but they get to the same thing, uh, like get people listening, get people saving your tracks, uh, and then hopefully kind of create some waves from there. Nice. Very cool. Yeah. So really, we've actually covered quite a bit in the first 30 minutes here, or 40 minutes of um, kind of diving into, you know, the release that first month before and after, and really just how to kind of put some extra love behind all the music, right? Is like put, put that 30 to $80 on to submit hub or, um, sound plate. You're saying that's the name, right? Yeah. Sound plate. Yeah. Um, something else that I, I just really wanted a presence with, um, something that I've seen in, in, in your work and it seems pretty important too, is, um, you, your, your stage name, right? Gary Oakland. Um, mm-hmm. that now you have sunset drip, which I just heard about, um, this evening and everything kind of has like a vibe to it, the, the imagery and even the music, right? So, um, initially when you got into the branding aspect of it, were you kind of considering who your artist is? I mean, sorry, who your people are that you're trying to, to reach out to? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I do like, and I think I, I didn't do this originally, but you know, as I've progressed, I've been trying to keep like a consistent brand presence, um, and a consistent, like visual, um, presence, like as, as best as I can with, you know, just the stuff that I've been doing. And, um, it's like, you know, Gary Oakland obviously stems from the Bay area. Sunset is the, you know, the neighborhood that I live in in San Francisco. Um, so it's, it's kind of localized, uh, and a lot of the art came from essentially just one of my roommates, um, when I, when I created the label, uh, he was a graphic designer. So, you know, taking advantage of the, the other creatives, uh, that you, that, you know, and that you network with, um, cause album art, I think is really important. Um, you know, the, the logos, the, the website design is, is really important in like presenting a professional brand. Um, and that's like, it's not that it's, you know, super fancy or anything, but just being kind of clean and um, like consistent and uh, like having good branding, I think is important um, in like the legitimacy of you as an artist. Um, and it's like, nobody knows, like if you just kind of stumble across Gary on some uh, playlist uh, and they go to my Spotify site, I want to like trick them into thinking that I'm as a, as legitimate of an artist as possible. Um and, and like fake it till you make it essentially same with the website. It's like, I put a lot of work into the website to make it clean and nice and look legit, um, which it is, but it's like, it's a small operation and, and, and Gary is too. Um, it's just like me doing this part time, but the more, the more that you can like create that consistency and, and like create that brand image, whatever that is, uh, I think is, is really important. Very cool. Yeah, I've actually um, heard of a lot of artists that actually have, have built up their Spotify playlist, spent a lot of time on that, and they're probably sometimes YouTube or something, and and then actually been able to tour off of that work that they've capitalized on. 
um, I think Pomplemousse is a is a good example of a band. You know that is it was that YouTube that they did. I think and um, do you guys do you know Pop, Pomplemousse? Uh, no, not off top, but I'll I'll check them out. Yeah, it's a it's a duo that just you know did a bunch of cool covers online, and um, I think they started Patreon as well. So that also oh, probably helped out. Crazy. Yeah. So <laughs> that would help. Yeah. yeah. Um, very cool. So, um, just kind of like checking all the different parts of music promotion here, um, dotting our I's, crossing our T's would be, um, your, your naming and your branding, right? You're, you're Gary Oakland and you just created your sunset drip, which is kind of like bringing out this extra, um, kind of vibe of like, you got a community around you now. And yeah. it's a label and it actually comes across that way. And it's really just a difference of having that website or not. So yeah, yeah really, really awesome to um, have you see that ha- or see that out there and encourage people to, you know, create their own in that way or even add into, you know, submit to your Sunset Drip, for example. Yeah, um, looks like uh, Enver has a question here on our attendees. Hand was raised. Um, if you want to just go into the chat and ask a question, you're welcome to do that. I'm not sure why your hand is raised otherwise. Um, yeah, but I'll, I'll continue asking some questions for people here. Uh, we are going live on our Twitch, our YouTube and our Facebook. So check that out at SF Garnish Music. And Gary Oakland is going to be a a special guest teacher here coming up in music marketing. Really stoked to have you. Um, and really cool how kind of pointed your energy has been right specifically with your style and genre of music that i hear and then also your branding um and it's i I just feel like if there's any way you can like speak your wisdom to um how how you came up with with your branding and maybe to inspire people to create their own branding or something because it is a game changer out there yeah 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 no definitely it's been it's been a really fun journey um I consider essentially like when I, when I started, I looked super, super not legit and amateur and sounded bad too, you know? And like over the years, this is like how, like what it, what it's turned into. Um, but in, in terms of the branding, like Gary is, is my alter ego. Essentially. It's like, I can make Gary into whatever I want him to be. Um, and so I like try to make Gary really cool. Gary's way cooler than, than like Andrew, uh, like, uh, the, the, like the day job guy. Um, and I can do that because like, I get to curate what, um, you know, what that brand image is like on, on my Spotify and, and, you know, other social media, Instagram mostly, uh, and, and same thing with the label. Uh, it's like, what would I want to see, uh, in a, in a cool record label? Like, I'll be a pretty small, but, um, it's just like a, you know, local operation. And I'm trying to work with all of the the great talent that I've, you know, interacted with, um, you know, at the studio with, with the meetups and the classes. Um, and hopefully like here, like get some great artists to work with, like help them promote their stuff. Um, using the, you know, what I've learned, there's plenty that I don't know about, you know, about this, but, uh, you know, about, sound design, other, other stuff like that, um, where it's so interesting learning from the other people in the community, um, and to be able to offer what I have kind of been able to figure out here in the marketing side and, and trade that and, um, you know, build relationships with other artists. So win, win. And, and then they can kind of come along and, and be a part of that brand as well. And like, um, you know, try to, yeah, try to promote them as best as possible, but it's, I think in terms of the, yeah, the style, the visual style, like I said, is it's like, I, I tried to make Gary cool. Um, my, you know, my roommate was a graphic designer and he, you know, d- does great work. Um, and like he made the the sunset drip logo, um, and did, you know, so a lot of the other a- album artwork and just, you know, like the connections that you build. Um, but in terms of like the, the music, like w- musically what the what the brand is um i'd say mostly you know lo-fi uh hip-hop beats like study beats um it's all or 
you know, the majority of the the Gary Oakland no feature uh, tracks are, you know, are instrumentals uh, for those kind of, uh, you know, like study beats playlists. I definitely think that there is a lot of benefit from making sure that the genre that you want to make music in like has a decent fan base and like that, you know, how to connect with those people. Uh, I think that Spotify playlisting in the way that I do it works really well for like that type of music and that type of playlist, which is, you know, like a passive, like throw this playlist on and while you're working or while you're, you know, streaming or, you know, whatever. Um, and, and that's like how I listen to a lot of those playlists, you know, like I love, having background music um i i can't stand silence so there's often you know music playing in in the house or, or while i'm working um and it's that kind of music and so uh i'm able to kind of just like add to what i had been doing uh as a listener like yeah it's i guess it's hard to it's hard to put but like i think of myself as the target audience and i'm only doing it for myself and uh anyone else that that enjoys it is great but you do get a lot of like you get a lot of no's you get a lot of like hey this song isn't uh you know a good fit for this playlist or like so i you know i didn't like the mixing or uh you know this element uh and we'll have to you know decline um you get way more no's than yeses uh and you have to be like good with that you can't take that personally um if you're actually gonna do this um you know for the long term and that was, I like, you know, that stings at first when you're, when you're really proud of something like your first thing that you made and you're trying to, to get a lot of traction and you get a lot of no's, um, like just please expect that. <laughs> and, um, and, and like live with it and take, take feedback and, and try to better yourself, but don't get hung up on all the people that aren't going to listen to your music. Just try to like connect with the ones that are going to listen and, and relate to them and, and give them a good product. Um, and, you know, do it for the love there's not like, I'm not seeing a lot of money from this, but again, it's like my side gig. And like, certainly people have been doing the same kind of thing and seeing a lot of money from it. Um, it just depends on the work that you put in, uh, and just the way that you're able to, to get, get heard. Nice. Awesome. Thanks so much, Gary. Oops. Oh, I think you're muted. I am muted. I'm now off mute. Thank you. I had a little cough there in the middle and I never took it off. Awesome. Thanks so much for your wisdoms here. Um, I would love to play one of your tracks and just kind of um, get people to hear some of your music and then maybe in, even talk shop around because you were talking about kind of a lo-fi hip hop and what the style is. Um, and I know yeah. that not everyone's style of music is the same, you know, even this genre. And I, I, have, I have a hard time, you know, classifying stuff, uh, but it really helps mm -hmm. out in Submit Hub. It's like you actually have to tell people like, hey, this is the style of music that matches your playlist. Like, check it out and really be forthright with you know how you're putting yourself out there and i really like what you said around you know you're gonna get you know 10 no's and maybe one yes and that would be good odds you know maybe a hundred no's and yeah and one yes um so if i was to play something um you you mentioned all we ever need and i i realized i was playing russian blues instead earlier oh on. that's right yeah yeah was... um do you want to play all all we ever need is that or actually sunset trip is a song i found out too yeah. Yeah. So sunset trip. Um, yeah, you can play that one. That's, that's, that's a solid one. Uh, and that, that release before I, I made sunset drip, um, and just thought it was kind of a funny play on, on words there when I created the, the album. So that's, or the, the, the label. Um, but yeah, that, that'd be a good one. Nice. Okay, cool. I'm just gonna put this on for a little while and then we can talk about it a little bit. Cool. Listening to Gary Oakland here. We're talking about music marketing and really how you can get your music out there. This is some lo fi hip hop. Back beat.
Nice. That's a good little chunk. It has a little outro here too. Um, awesome. So I really like that that backbeat, and that's all done through uh, Logic, right? Yep. Yeah. Um, Do you use any yeah, Ableton use at Logic. all? What was that? Do you use any Ableton at all? Uh, not anymore. Uh, when I was in college, I took like a little stab at, at starting to produce and used Ableton. Like, had no idea what I was doing. Um, and then when I kind of took it back up in earnest, I, I switched over to Logic uh, because, like, my buddy was using Logic and was like, "Yeah, I could show you some stuff if you get it." Uh, and that was kind of the catalyst, you know. Um, but yeah, I use Logic. Uh, I do mostly like sampling, I guess. Um, I use a lot of splice um, and just chop up stuff. And and I play, like I said, I play jazz piano, so I've got a you know big MIDI MIDI keyboard and can play in the keys, play in bass. Um, you know, play in whatever, whatever else, but, um, yeah, it's like kind of lo-fi hip hop, a lot of sampling. Nice. Very, very cool. Yeah. I dig the grooves. Uh, very cool. So, um, yeah. In your songwriting, it, are you kind of, is that the stuff that inspires you? Is that, is that style of music and that's up front? Um, or is that like something you're like, Hey, this is the style of music that's going to be the most, the easiest to market. Hmm. That's a good question. Um, I would say I am kind of just lucky that I, that's like what I started producing and, and ended up finding like a pretty decent network in terms of like all the playlists that exist. And like, there's so many like lo-fi hip hop radio or like, you know, study beats to Jill or whatever to, um, out there because I think it's such a popular genre and it's, um, I, I started mainly cause I really enjoyed, like I listened to a lot of those playlists before I started producing, uh, and just really enjoy the music. Um, like I said, I'm a jazz guy. I honestly love smooth jazz. Like I have a lot of just like slow, like coffee table jazz playlists, uh, just to have background music on. And I'm not like, I'm not like a crazy jazz pianist or anything, uh, especially not anymore, but, uh, I think it fills that same um use case where you just want something on to like have a mood and not silence uh and i like i said i i like am constantly wanting to have have some music playing um even if it's not like the main event just want something on and uh so that's kind of what i've been trying to create uh and often not to like be a narcissist but like i'll listen to my own playlists and my own tracks a lot just because they again like kind of fit that use case that i'm looking for Nice. Yeah, totally. So you can like chill back and listen to some sweetness. There's one called Sweet Love I'm going to also try out here. Um, yeah. we, we can go out to this. Uh, we're not quite there yet. But um, yeah, super stoked to hear your music more. I've, I've checked it out because um, it is on the, um, we created a little playlist um, curation and Kyle over here at um, Garnish um, is really stoked to take our curated playlist and then curate down and distill to like you know, really the styles and, and genres of music that we really want to um, promote out there. And you have a lot of tracks that are, yeah, really easy to listen to. Um, and I really like the jazzy chords and like um, the change ups going on Thank the you. backbeat as well. Yeah. The feel of the drums. Um, mm -hmm. And this is actually out of music marketing, but you know, something that I, I, I love music. So it's a, it's a music question, which is um, in logic, are you, bringing in beats that already have that back tempo or are you bringing in straight beats and then kind of like pushing that back feel onto them? Yeah, that's a great, that's a great question. And, um, like definitely stems from the jazz, I think like started in jazz band in seventh grade, I want to say, uh, and you know, just that's kind of been the, the groove that I've always enjoyed. Uh, and for the most part, uh, when I'm looking for samples to, to start building a song, like, I think my ear is just drawn to that. Uh, and that's kind of what I start creating um, based on. And then, yeah, I love like the, you know, the hip hop or like the jazzy hip hop drums. Uh, and then that's kind of the style that I would play as well, like, you know, on the keys and stuff like that. So um, yeah, I think I'm just kind of drawn to to that type of, uh, you know, sample or song starter and, and then kind of can make my best stuff, uh, you know, along with that. Nice. Very cool. Yeah. And, and splice is a great tool for that. Yeah. 
Awesome. Yeah. Well, I want to um, just kind of go out with letting people know that if they want to join a music marketing class with Gary Oakland and kind of not only learn what we just kind of talked about, right, which is the timelines, the websites, the naming, the branding, your social media, keeping that up to date, um, caring for not only the sound, but also the visual, what it looks like, connecting with your network of um, design friends, which is like what you've, you've done, Gary. Um, and if you want to do that and, you know, do this workshop, part of the workshop is you're going to kind of go through these steps that he's been talking about, but also break into groups or break into little side groups and work on your stuff and then kind of get some extra pro professional feedback as you're creating your branding, your website, etc. So, um, I just want to put that out to you. To, out there to all you guys. And as we listen to Sweet Love by Gary Oakland, I'm going to also check out his website and also sf.garnishmusicproduction.com. And thank you so much for your time here, Gary. Really appreciate it. Check out Gary Oakland everywhere. Um, social media, specifically Spotify and Apple. He's out there. He's got over 100,000 plays. No, 1.2 million plays. Is that what it was? Yeah, like 3 million on Spotify and almost a million on Apple. Awesome. Very beautiful. Yeah. So we're going to listen to um, Sweet Love, and um, I'll do a little out here as we go through. Is there anything else you want to um, say to people in the hemispheres? Yeah, just, uh, yeah, I want to say, you know, thank you for taking the time to have me. Uh, really excited to, you know, teach that class like we were talking about. Um, and yeah, check me out. I'm mostly on Instagram at Gary underscore Oakland, uh, sunset trip records has their own Instagram. And, um, that's, you know, the, the social media of choice. So if you want to stay informed on new releases or like I said, submit to the, to the label or just connect with us. Um, yeah, please check those out. And, uh, yeah, thanks so much. Beautiful. Thanks so much for, um, taking the time here, Gary, and really excited to see where our, uh, music marketing classes go with you. Here is sweet love. Nice swing going on. We're going to check out Sunset Drip a little bit as we listen here. Dig the art, Gary. This is really cool. Thank you. Nice. We're going to transition over here to a little bit of the SF Garnish website. And what we have here is um, our producer program is 120 hours and our academy is 360 hours. And I just want to share a little bit more about how we're going about doing these programs. They're all the short courses lead up to the producer program and academy. So if you guys just want to bite off a little bit, you guys can join us for an 18 or 36 hour workshop short course, starting with your DAW of preference, Logic, Pro Tools, Ableton, and then going into your different sound design, mixing and mastering, and then through the advanced courses. One of the more advanced courses is talking about music marketing, right? So, um, and that's something that we're gonna be doing with some of our producer and academy students. So please check that out at sf.garnishmusicproduction.com. Email us at sf at garnishmusicproduction.com, 510-463-4769. Thanks again to Gary Oakland for joining us. And we are super stoked to have you here. And we're going to sign off and see you guys in the near future. For everyone else that has been on our social media, please like and subscribe. 
And once again, check out Gary Oakland and his new label that just came out in the past year called Sunset Drip Records. So there you guys got it. Have a great day.